So if they're in the decubitus position and they're nice and still for you, then you can perform your coronal views like this. The knee is flexed like this, um, in both your long and your transverse plane. And then you can perform your stress maneuver by pushing backwards while the knee's adducted. Um, that's the Barlow manoeuvre and then the Ortolani is you abduct and sometimes you need to lift it forward a little so you abduct and you can sometimes place your finger here and feel a clunk as it comes back in. Um, but that's primarily not our role to do a clinical exam. Uh, that's already been done so the reason the child's here is because they've either had a positive clinical test or they've... Um, had packing disorders, meaning they were in the mum's wound, uh, they were, meaning they were in the mum's womb, um, tightly packed in, either in breech or with the you know the legs right up straight like this, um, in breech position for a long time, or twins or very little fluid, so oligohydramnios, um, and they're some of the risk factors, particularly if there's family history, they're the firstborn or they're female, the other reasons. Okay, so in this longitudinal view here, the coronal view, our transducer is going to be seeing the ilium, which is superior. It's going to be seeing the pubis if our transducer is too far forward. If our transducer is too far back, we'll be seeing only ischium. And then what's closest to us or up is obviously the femur. Followed, well, we, first you'll have the soft tissue, so the glute min, the glute med over the top and then what's furthest away from the transducer is the acetabulum so the triradiate cartilage is running through separating ilium from pubis and ilium from ischium um, and obviously what eventually stabilizes the femur in its socket is um, the ligamentum teres which is at the fovea capitis which is that little depression there on the bone and then you'll have the soft labrum that's running around um, so that labrum can become everted and damaged as the hip is subluxating posterolaterally out of the hip. Um, but um, initially there's just a, a lot of cartilage that kind of uh, forms the acetabulum. So the acetabulum ossifies with time as does the femoral head ossify with time. So at three months this infant would still have quite a spongy looking hypochoic femoral head which we can easily see through and see the triradiate cartilage to make sure that we're in the right plane, which is the longitudinal axis of the body. Um, and then we would place our lines on to see the, the graph angle. So the alpha angle of the graph is a bit like your AP X-ray. So it's looking at uh, uh, the angle between the ilium here and the acetabulum. So the acetabulum here, if it's nice and steep and well formed, it's very hard for the bone to roll up and out of the acetabulum. If it's very blunt here uh, or hyperplastic, then it can very easily roll in and out. Uh, a hip that's been rolling in and out can also cause a second depression here on the ilium, which is like a pseudo acetabulum. So we do need to be careful in a dislocated hip sitting out here. If there's a depression here and you take your lateral ultrasound it can look like the hip is sitting in a socket when in fact it's up here sitting in a fake socket or a depression caused by sort of a, a long-term dysplastic hip um, so those maneuvers to bring it back in again are the ortolani so we abduct the hip which looks like bringing the leg out externally rotating out and a slight lift forward and the clunk is felt as the hip comes back into the socket. The barlow looks like pushing backwards while the hip is adducted. And you can put your fingers in here in the groin and sort of push out a little bit at the same time just to give the hip a really good stress. So if it looks normal, try, try pushing maybe one, two, three times backwards like that. But as you can see, I needed to stabilize the sacrum and you can feel the hip moving there. So rather than hold the probe and try and stabilize the sacrum with these fingers, we can roll the infant flat. So if they're supine, you're essentially just using the bed as this thing to stabilize the sacrum while you push back and scan with your left hand 
to obtain the coronal view on their right hip. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, the Von Rosen brace will bring the hips out into a frog leg position like this with great big handlebars coming up here. Um, sometimes if you're allowed to um, take them out of the brace, you can squeeze the handlebars together to get your view or simply unhook the leg from the, the stirrup. Um, the pavlikarnis is a little easier to scan in but if you do scan with lots of children in braces, it's very important to try and learn to scan uh, with the infant supine. And, and that's totally fine because the people who developed the test like Harky, which is the femoral head coverage, um, did all their testing with the infant supine. So you're not too far um, out of the realms of, of what has already been established. Graf certainly does scan his infants with the decubitus and also using a brace. Um, but we don't have the luxury of braces in our ultrasound departments. So hopefully that's been helpful and good luck with your scanning.